but yeah, all this Anu crap and all the people are blogging about Anu like they, I don't know, just met him at the grocery store. <laughs> Seriously, they talk about the giant lizard man like he's a real person they've been talking to. You know, I'm you're thinking, ah, oh, delusional. Yeah. <laughs> You'd think that once the, uh, like, you know, the main, like, couple of Destiny channels which were taken out last year, you'd think that they would have, like, thought, right, we need to move on from this Anu stuff. <laughs> Just put behind the, you know, the majority of the stuff has re that has really got our asses kicked by, uh, you know, by critics and just move on to something a bit yeah. more sane. Yeah, that's, what the, that's what the Scientologists <laughs> do. They hide it. They don't, yeah. they don't talk about it. Yeah. I mean, Anu is the equivalent to Zenu. You know, they sound very similar. They're basically playing on the same, uh, you know, the same instrument, you know, same tool, like some kind of galactic leader. You know, it's a bit different with Destiny and Scientology, but, you know, in some ways there are some similarities. Yeah, I, I thought it was a chance when all that, <clears throat> sorry, when all that uh, crap got deleted. Mm. I was thinking maybe they can move on and this time try to attract sensible people. Yeah. Like with jobs and education and stuff. And maybe they could go somewhere. But no, they're like, no, we want the dumb conspiracy nutters who sit at home all day and who are really frustrated about never getting laid. We want yeah. those people for a movement. You know, the way I see these Destonians, it's like um, rather than actually getting, as you say, people who are, well, I, I would call them useful. You know, people who are actually useful in society, people who actually be useful to a um, a new organisational movement. They get these people, break them down, they break associations with friends and very often family, and they basically stay in their room, you know, fading away, their weight shrinking, their intelligence diminishing, basically like some kind of junkie. On destiny, you know, destiny is the well, the drug, and they're all addicts, yeah. and they're all basically being destroyed by it, you know. But that's how Scientology cures drug addictions. They make they make Scientology the drug addiction. They True. just replace it. They get you off the drugs, and they get you addicted to Scientology. Yeah, that's how Destiny works in the same way. They get you off the drugs, and they get you addicted to the to the cult material. Mm. I spoke I think to I a asked one guy oh. once. Whether he said he stopped alcohol and smoking and drugs because of destiny, so I asked him, so if you quit destiny, would you start again? Because chances are high that you would. Mm. He didn't test, of course. I'd like to have seen that. Sorry, I think I interrupted someone. That's okay. No. Um, uh, I was just going to... I can't remember the point now, but I thought of another point, so it's even better. Um, <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous, in uh, largely in the United States, where it's... Uh, well, in many groups, not not all of them, but many of them are backed by um, partially religious organisations, at least partially. You end up with people who are um, basically exchanging the addiction of alcohol for the addiction of God. You know? Mm. So it is, you know, the same sort of thing as, you know, obviously as mentioned about Scientology, as mentioned about Destiny. Uh, you know, it's simply having something to fill in the addiction gap you know because when person when a person loses an addiction they leave a gap within themselves they need to fill and rather than filling it with um meaningful self-expression they tend to fill it with um well a belief system and become you know extreme devotees because it's just easier to do that because you don't have to think if you're a devotee if you're a blind uh, a blind faith devotee you can just simply keep on um, feeding your addiction through a different means you, can, you know make mm -hmm. yourself feel like you know okay I don't need the drugs because I've got a new drug and it's the drug of the mind basically I mean all drugs operate obviously you know with the uh, well essentially with the chemistry of the brain people exchange one particular high uh, a particular high of say taking a particular drug and they swap that for a uh, well, a rush from being a uh, uh, I don't know a, a spiritual um, devotee, being a person feeding their uh, narcissistic impulses very often. So swapping one drug for another, in the end. Yeah, mm. I, I think they even named a topic like that. 
on on the Destiny forum. It's like uh, my daily dose of Destonians. Oh god. <laughs> Which isn't uh, but, alliteration on the one hand, so that was a wise move to name it that because it sticks in your head. Mm. Um, but I doubt they were aware of that. That's one thing. Um, but it even sounds like a drug, like my dose of Dystonians, like the yeah. newest fix, so yeah. they don't have withdrawal symptoms. It, it sounds like herbal medicine, doesn't it? You know, like something made from, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, tea leaves and um, I don't know, essence of lavender. And you've, you've got to take these every day and, you know, oh, these will help you to lose weight and, you know, become uh, less intelligent and everything else. Take your daily capsule capsule of Destonia, you know, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, that might work. Yeah. They, they also, they have huge bags under their eyes for the biggest part. That looks pretty bad. It does. It's like, oh, yeah, you just need five hours of sleep a day. That's totally okay. <laughs> seen people of them doing that I mean yeah you know you're not allowed to drive trucks anymore right <sighs> I hope they know it's not good it's really no. not good and it makes people look ugly er I dread to think what it's like for these um, destiny junkies who spend most of their time in their house watching you know as much as they can destiny videos reading destiny material devoting themselves so much towards the cause and only sleeping four or five hours at most it must be slowly killing them to be entirely fair and I suppose it is looking at mm, them not in the best shape no I mean I, I'm Just not in the best say if, if the Go zombie on. apocalypse comes they're going to be eaten first yeah <laughs> or maybe they oversleep or maybe they just don't notice because they're just busy blogging <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if there ever is a disaster, we'll know, uh, you know, like, say, I don't know, Godzilla comes down or whatever. <laughs> yeah. we, we won't have to worry about running away from Godzilla. We'll just have to worry about being quicker than a skinny, uh, malnourished, muscle-depleted Destonian. So bring on the Destonians. Great. They can populate the world and we'll be okay. All the sane, normal people can get away and the Destonians get eaten. <laughs> There's not, not enough of them. Yeah. Actually, there's one who's, who's uh, well worked out. I think it's this uh, giant guy. Is that giant or Gian or Gian or whatever? Mm. I don't know. Who was that? The, the guy with the lizard or whatever that was. Gecko. Yeah. Mm. Dances with geckos? Dances with geckos. I think you named him that. <laughs> yeah, I think I did. I'm not <laughs> sure. He, he said he grew five centimeters when he came to destiny farm and forgave himself when he was 18 what and i was like hey, hey maybe you grew because you were 18 yeah and, and he, he wrote in a blog um was it because of i don't know hormones and because it was just meant to grow because i mean that's the age <laughs> where you grow as a guy no i don't believe in coincidences oh god I was like, oh god <laughs> fuck. and that's the guy who's talking about yeah and I, I will splice genes and find the genes for murder and rape. Um, yeah, you do that, please. <laughs> do that. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the, the amount of incompetence is incredible. 